Hope you're having a good time with your family and friends and liking these sessions. In today's video in Azure, I'm here to show you how you can set up malware scanning within Defender for Cloud. Like always, if you're liking these videos, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this content. But before we get into the configuration step, let's try to understand what the service is and how this can be beneficial for us. First of all, Defender for Cloud, which used to be called Azure Security Center, is a cloud native application protection platform. Also called CNAP in short form. Now there are different resources you can protect by utilizing Defender for Cloud. For example, you can utilize this for protection of your server. It comes in plan one and plan two. And there's different cost for that. Same way databases, you can use it to protect app services, APIs. But the one that we are considering today is a storage account. Now, this can be enabled at the resource level or at the subscription level. Now, when you enable this at the subscription level, it means all the storage account underneath that will be protected, or you can do it at the resource level, which we're going to do in our lab. And the storage account that I'm going to use for today's lab is BAB USA. From the costing perspective, there are two costs. First cost is at the storage account level. And the second cost, which is optional, which we're going to set up today is for the malware scan. And malware scanning in Defender for Cloud relies on services such as uh, storage read operation. on blob indexing and event grid notification. The reason I'm telling you all these things is that you should not be surprised at the end of the day because on the cloud, you know, the price can come from uh, different uh, uh, components. So you should be aware of, uh, you know, where your cost is coming from though you can limit the amount of data it can it can scan uh, that is a configurable step that can be done on the uh, on the azure portal but uh, it's an it's a subset of service within defender for cloud for the storage this malware scanning and it relies on these three services and in order to achieve this in order to you know what you want to do in case a malware is infected there are different ways you can you can configure that you can use logic apps maybe and trigger that the data will be that malware file will be deleted. You can use function app in order to achieve the same thing. In our case, we're going to use ABAC. This is a short form for attribute based access control. And that is what we're going to use in order to configure that. And another component to this is that, and maybe this is beneficial, actually I'll talk about when we do the configuration of the step. So with that, let me just flip over to the Azure portal. And I'm logged into this Azure portal with owner access. And let me show you the storage account. I've already created one. And the one that I'm going to use is BAB USA. Uh, but before we go, let me show you what I have done. So it's just a standard storage account and it has a container with the name let's say c101 now if i go and open this up you'll see that i don't have permission i will explain that in a moment but let me go and show you under settings if i go to the configuration and why you see that particular error because i've uh, disabled anonymous access storage account access key account key access is also disabled and what I've done is default for Microsoft Entra authorization in the Azure portal, I have enabled it. So what does that mean is even though I have owner access, 
I don't have access and I cannot upload or delete resources within that storage account and that container. And I'm going to change that. But let me just take a moment here explaining this, right? And that's where the attribute access control will come into play. Because when we interact with Azure, we interact at two levels, at the control plane and at the data plane. Now, I have owner access at the control plane. And uh, let's say, for example, if I create a database, I'm creating database at the control pane. But when I do any query to that database, I will do that at the data plane. Similarly, when I create a storage account, I'm doing this at the control plane. But when I read or write any data, I'll be doing at the data plane level. And same thing when I create let's say a virtual machine, it's at the control plane. And when I'm RDPing at the, at the uh, RDPing into that virtual machine, I'm doing that, that the data plane, right? So even though I have access as an owner to that particular subscription, but because I'm utilizing attribute based access control and I've enabled Entra authorization in the Azure portal, I'm not able to access that, but let me just go and uh, change it. And for that, I can go to access control. So let me just quickly show you if I go and show you role assignment. I have the owner access, but if I go at the blob level, you see, I don't have access. So I'm going to add role assignment. And I'm going to go and search for blob storage, storage blob data contributor. Let's go to next. I'm going to pick myself. And uh, let's go and uh, add the condition here. And I'm going to go add condition. And in this, I'm going to add the action. And if you look at these different operation, you have the list blob, you have uh, uh, you have the read blob. So there are different operations that I can perform. The one that I am uh, interested in is the read a blob. So if you look at list blob does not mean that you can download. So if you're not infected in case, so you won't be infected in case the file is infected, right? But uh, because storage work is not a compute, so a malicious file uh, can be invoked in it, right? Just to give you a little bit background, it means it means you're not infected. But if a, let's say a user or an application reads that, and that's where the uh, the malware attack will start to taking into effect. It will going to affect the system and bring your application down. So you want to restrict that. So that's the one that I'm going to utilize in action. So let's go and uh, select that. And I'm going to add an expression. And in the attribute resource source, I'm going to pick resource. And uh, in the attribute, I'm going to pick blob index tags, values in keys. And for the key, I'm going to put and make sure that you put this exactly in case you're configuring this is malware scanning C 
scan result and under the operator i'm going to pick string equal ignore case string equals ignore case and in the value i will pick no threats found and let's go and uh, save this you can see it's all listed over here if i want i can obviously edit the condition remove the condition let's go and uh, review and assign so role assignment has been added successfully now it takes some time actually uh, you know to take effect so if i still go into the container i might not see that i have access to it no okay it's showing that now i have access sometimes it takes some time that's good right now let's go and enable defender for cloud and that you can do under the security and networking and as i said that you can do it at the subscription level or at the uh, at the resource level so i'm going to enable this and this is the cost you're going to pay so there are two costs for this as i said the cost for the resource which is the storage account per storage account and then this is optional for sen sensitive data threat detection there is no cost but the one that we are going to configure is your malware scanning which is 0.15 gb per scan you can configure this how much data you want to scan on an average on a month right but let's pick the default here so i'm going to enable this on storage account Okay, so that was uh, added successfully. If you want, now you can see that the button is switched on. It's green, so it means that uh, it will protect me any kind of cybersecurity attacks. And uh, here I can set the limit of the GB scan per month. So by default, it is uh, 5,000 GB. You can always, uh, uh, let's say, we are just doing it for testing purposes. I'm just going to, let's say, 50 gig only. And that setting will be applied automatically but just remember there are two cost component one is the cost for the storage uh, resource that i'm going to protect per storage account and the other going to be the malware scanning the one that we're going to test it today all right so that's good so now let's go to the data storage under container that's the container i'm going to utilize let me just try to upload some file and i'm going to utilize two files for this demonstration one is going to be a clean file And the other file that I'm going to utilize this is the file that is infected. And I've done this deliberately. I'm using an Iker file uh, in order to uh, prove a point over here. But uh, let me add that file also in this container. The name of that file is dirty. So two files are uploaded. So let me just go and open the one which is clean. And this file, I can go and uh, download. No problem. That's fine, right? Let's see what's the experience with the dirty. And you can see this request is not authorized to perform the operation using this permission. Even though I have a storage blob contributor access onto this uh, container and this storage account. And remember the difference which I told you about the control plane and the data plane. That's where it is coming from. And we are utilizing attribute based access control. Now, this means, means that the Defender for Cloud is working fine. It has identified this machine, uh, this file as malware infected, and it's prohibiting me to download because just going back what I've also told you before too, because storage is not compute. So a malicious file can be invoked in it, right? So it means you're not infected, 
But let's say if a user in this case, I have got this access or an application reads this, that's it, you know, uh, you'll be infected. Uh, and uh, that's how the malware actually works. And you can go and actually see if I go into my storage account, And if I go under my Defender for Cloud, you should be able to see the timestamp. You can see the malicious file was uploaded, uh, but I'm protected, one, because I'm utilizing Defender for Cloud, so it has inf identified this file as malware. And secondly, I have enabled attribute-based access control, so even though if I have the contributor access, I'm not able to download, so I'm fully protected. So that is how you're going to configure uh, malicious file configuration in Defender for Cloud for Storage. Hopefully this was helpful. Thanks for watching. Have a good day.